for whatever reason, it feels great to touch it. Um, I don't know how it, how it really looks, um, but it feels like, oh, this is what I thought a nebula would be like. I was born with congenital cataracts. So what that means is that I had a opaque uh, film over both of my eyes when I was born. What that resulted in is very blurry vision, um, blurry images. I don't have any sense of detail. As a blind child, um, there weren't a lot of accessible materials readily available um, to to me as a youngster who was already interested in science. It was something that we would take um, styrofoam balls or, or cups and kind of make the planets as, you know, very rudimentary, you know, concept of, of what the planets look like. But when it came to looking at an image from a textbook, that was something that was very, I, was, I didn't have access to. All of these were words and concepts I couldn't physically grasp on my own um, to experience it for myself. As a blind student, you're wondering, can I get just as excited about it as everyone else? And this book is entitled, Touch the Universe, a NASA Braille Book of Astronomy by Noreen Grice, which took uh, Hubble and the images that came from Hubble and created a, a source of really powerful information of what a telescope looks like, what does a nebula look like, um, what do even our stars, what do they look like, but with the book it actually came to life. It created a sense and actual um, understanding of what these science concepts that you're learning in school, you can actually learn this from a book as well. One of the images um, that was captured with, with Hubble is um, Jupiter. So on this page, we have the outline of the planet itself. Um, we also have um, kind of the, the gas rings um, that are at various points on um, the planet itself. But we also have the gray red spot. And so um, with touch, I can actually tell it's not a, a, a horizontal um, view, it's actually at an angle. So again, through these images from Hubble, I get a better understanding of, of what um, my classmates, what my friends are looking at when they go to museums. And, and it does allow me to question and say, well, why does this planet tilt in the way that it does? there is a star um, within the center of it. And uh, almost just like a, a number eight, um, it's expanded out from its uh, hemisphere. Again, as, as, a, um, as a young kid, and you, you hear the word nebula, um, it, it's kind of equated to nebulous, and you think, oh, there's, there's chaos, there's, it, it's just a bunch of stars, but to see through this image that a nebula can have a certain order to it, um, a, a beautiful order to it, then this hourglass nebula shows that that's, that's what indeed what it looks like. Just almost like our Milky Way, it actually spirals out with almost three, almost three legs um, that, that spiral out it and it's, it's it's almost like you, you want to grab it and almost spin it. And that's actually what the galaxy is doing is, is spinning. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> it either feels almost like a spider with legs, but you know that it's, it's a galaxy in space. I felt like a, I was back in you know fifth or sixth grade and, and reliving that experience of the launch of Hubble and actually getting a chance to say, hey, now I have this access. Now I can experience this excitement for myself. It kind of, you know, made me feel like a kid again um, to, to be able to say, oh, this is what a star looks like, or this is what a telescope, or this is what our planets look like, because for such a long time, I didn't know.